Hi, Hardys all over the world. Welcome back for yet another live virtual event celebrating season eight of When Calls the Heart. I'm Deidre Behar from Entertainment Tonight. And I, as always, feel so lucky to be joined by some of the most talented people on television. They really need no introduction, but please help me welcome Aaron Krako, Pascal Hutton, and Kevin Smith. Hi! Yay. Hello! So, obviously, I just got to address the obvious. We're still here at home, but we're doing things virtually. We're celebrating When Calls the Heart. Before we get started, I just want to touch base. Aaron, how are you doing? Are you at home? What's been going on? I'm good. I'm at home. I'm in California. The weather's beautiful. That's been a nice perk. But yeah, I have really nothing to complain about. It's been so nice to get to watch One Calls the Heart with all the Hardys every week and feel like we're all at least virtually together in that way. But yeah, I'm doing fine. Thanks. Of course. Yes. Queen of the gifts. We love tweeting along with you on Sunday nights. <laughs> uh, Pascal, you're right there with Aaron firing off some hilarious tweets every Sunday. What has life been like for you? Yeah, I mean, well, Kevin and I just got back. It feels like still fairly recently from Hawaii, which was amazing, which we'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so it just feels uh, life is good. Life is good. It's beautiful here in Vancouver, and I'm with my family, and uh, yeah, it's good. Good, good, good. And uh, Kevin, do you have anything to report in terms of new loaves of bread, new creation? <laughs> No, I got, I've, got, I've got nothing to report as far as that goes, but I want to be real. Things are not going so well. Oh, what's going My on? wife was not happy that I went to Hawaii without her. So wow. when I got home, all the work of the household just fell onto my shoulders and she disappeared. I don't know where she is all day. <laughs> well, I worked like a dog at home to make up for having gone to Hawaii and have a lot of fun with this one instead of movies. So I'm paying for it big time right now. Life's about balance, Kevin. Sometimes you're in paradise and sometimes you got to do the home renovations. It's so true. Right? Okay, well, I want to get right into it. Uh, we've got one more episode left in season eight of When Calls the Heart. Um, Kevin and Pascal, I want to start with, you know, Lee and Rosemary and their trajectory throughout this season. It's been so beautiful to watch their journey as a couple and they're really diving into their passions and finding out what they want to do with their lives and what brings them purpose. So in this final episode that we're going to see on Sunday, um, Pascal, let's start with you. What can you tease about what is in this, this final chapter of season eight for Rosemary? I think what we, I, I think what we see with Rosemary in this final episode is kind of a renewed excitement and renewed passion and a uh, focus. I think she's found a focus and she's really excited about that. And that's going to kind of propel into hopefully season nine. And um, yeah, so that's where, that's where we're at with Rosemary. And I think the two of them as a couple have kind of found a, found a focus. I think there was, some time there seasons where they were trying to wrap their head around the 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 loss of a dream that they thought was going to unfold very easily for them and mm -hmm. hasn't uh, which is having a child and i think when that doesn't unfold easily i think a couple kind of has to redefine mm -hmm. and what their purpose in life is going to be because when they've assumed that it's going to be one other thing they have to kind of rethink that. And that's where we've been for a few seasons. And I think you see the two of them kind of finally get a little spark of something that's exciting them. Oh my gosh. I, so many things just came to mind. Okay, first of all, when you say Rosemary is gonna have like a renewed, um, I don't know, sense of joy or, or passion ignite, I mean, my mind immediately goes to theater. Um, are we going to maybe see her make a grand return to the stage or could it be possibly something totally different? You know I can't tell you that. <laughs> is People there, is... need to tune in. What I will say, though, and I think what we've come to appreciate about Rosemary is she is never shy to, to uh, redefine herself and try something new on and jump into the adventure of that. And so um, that's all I'm going to give you. 
Wow. Okay. Well, I cannot wait to see what adventure lies ahead for Queen Rosemary. Um, Kevin, <laughs> similarly for Lee, you know, he's been having a lot of conversations with Joseph about fulfillment. Um, are we going to see, you know, a, a beautiful, you know, bow tied up on the end of that by the time we get to the finale? <laughs> I certainly think that we're going to get a lot closer to a bow, maybe the finger on the ribbon, maybe not a totally <laughs> tied off bow, but at least a finger on a ribbon. Okay. And, and as an actor, what's great about, um, about this sort of scenario is often you come into a show, the character, I mean, I've always tried to have a backstory for them. And as they've written them, my backstory turns to dust because none of it applies. <laughs> But we get to see a renewed interest of where he comes from and where he's going. So it's like when you take somebody's passion and he doesn't even really know what it is. He's searching for it. He's just not fulfilled in the way that maybe like Pascal said, if the uh, the family thing didn't go as planned. So they have to reevaluate a little bit. And I think watching Joseph, um, you know, is such a self-effacing guy and, and accepts his destiny. And I think Lee is inspired by that. And it gets him thinking and searching. And, and I, I love that as an actor because now I get to have it from its from its birth. So this whole inception, I get to play right from the very beginning instead of having to try and make up a backstory that either catches up or doesn't. So I was super excited about it. We've been talking about this thing for uh, a season or two going back and you know where are the characters going. And I think that it's really exciting to kind of have a rebirth of where we are and where we're going. Wow. No okay. pun intended on the rebirth. <laughs> well, you know, similar, similar to how I think it's so beautiful that Lee and Rosemary really um, opened up about something that affects so many couples. I think it's also so wonderful what we've seen this season, which is you can discover new passions at any point in your life. And it could be anything under the sun, whatever fuels you and makes you excited, go for it. And I, I really love that we've seen that with the two of them. I'm excited to see what's next. Aaron, I, I got to pivot to you because... Look, I know you a little bit in real life, and what I know is you are a tried and true girl's girl. And it pains me every time <laughs> I have to see a scene where Rosemary and, and Elizabeth are sort of at odds. So I'm hoping that you can sort of put us at ease maybe a little bit and let us know, are they going to hug and make up? I mean, look, what, what I'll say about that is this is Hope Valley, and we strive for happy endings and happy relationships and friendships. And and I know for myself and for Pascal as well, this getting to tell the story of this female friendship in such a healthy way has been very important to both of us. They're, they are always supportive of each other. They always love each other. And I think that love and support is really, and communication and honesty, those are all things that make up the backbone of their friendship. And that isn't something that would be just thrown away in any kind of cavalier way. So um, I would encourage the Hardys to be hopeful <laughs> and patient. Yeah. And I think that um, Elizabeth and Rosemary will find their way back to each other. Uh, People are not happy with with uh, where we were at in the wedding episode. I know. The, the Elizabeth's apology in the dress shop, not satisfying for anybody. I got so many comments like, <laughs> not good enough. This is well, I agree. Enough. I agree. I don't think it was good enough. I think that there's really, there's more work that needs to be done in order for these two women to reunite as the the best friends that they are and we're just we're not quite there yet but they had to put their problems aside for Florence and Ned and I think they did all right they managed oh 100 percent kept it very very classy and <laughs> I, I'm just curious I'm curious you know I think one calls the heart we love because you, you always bring us joy and, and and touch our hearts no pun intended in so many ways but showing that relationships are complicated, even amongst best friends. Um, Aaron, what do you think the, the teachable moment is here in seeing a, a little bit of friction between these, these two women who have, have truly been through everything together? I just think it makes it more relatable. If everything was perfect on television, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be all that interesting, mm -hmm. number one, but but it just wouldn't be relatable. I mean, 
I think it's really important for people to see even the healthiest relationships and friendships have rough patches. And it's good to be able to see how those people overcome those rough patches and, and find their way back to each other. So I hope that people learn from it. Now, Pascal, I know that you and Aaron are very close on screen, but also off screen. So I'm curious, when you're in those scenes, you're there together filming, and you have to be a little tough with each other, what, what were those moments like on set? I think it started with a, a real excitement. Both of us were really excited to kind of sink our teeth into it. And as we've seen that this tension kind of goes on for a few episodes. And so <laughs> after a few, a few scenes of it, I think both of us were thinking, this this isn't that much fun. We're, we're not really enjoying no. this. It was awful. I, yeah. that, not that much fun. It was brutal. I hated it. It was very hard to commit to. Uh, it, it's just very challenging to be at odds with Pascal. I'll say that. Yeah. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Kevin. Yeah, exactly. Can I, uh, Aaron and Pascal, can I ask you from an acting perspective, in order to get in the mindset of our characters are upset with each other, are you staying apart on set that day or are you two able to, you know, hang out, have a laugh, you know, you know, have a snack together and then you have, bam, go back in the scene and, and you're not exactly best friends in that moment? No, we weren't keeping our distance. I think, uh, in fact, there was probably more of, of the usual me not being able to stay in character and like getting the giggles in a scene with Pascal. Um, and I think, I also think it was something that we discussed a fair amount, like wanting to make sure that we told the arc of that story mm -hmm. in a way that felt authentic. So I would turn to Pascal and say, do you feel like the way I'm delivering this line make sense like d does that feel authentic to you and she's obviously i i trust her opinion and i value her opinion and she was able to say no in fact you could do better <laughs> <laughs> keeping it real always I remember saying quite that <laughs> not that it would be out of character i just don't <laughs> no never in those words but always helpful feedback i mean we was, were there to support each other what, what was confusing is that and i think the fans are well aware of this by now, but we block shoot. And so it wasn't, it wasn't sequential. Like we didn't film that first scene where we walk away from the row houses and, and we didn't, and then followed by the next scene, followed by Rosemary coming to visit her at the row house. And then she kind of snaps at Rosemary. Like we didn't. And so that was the trickier thing that, yeah, I said it, snaps. You, you just own that, okay, Aaron? Because that's what Elizabeth did. Um, okay, I'm just going to say it wasn't without cause. I seem to recall Rosemary saying something about Jack's death not being important to Nathan. So we could just... We could just go through this again if you want. See, this is... But, let's show that for a second. Okay, sure. What I will say is, as we were filming it, that's we were often checking in about where is this in the arc of this, of this, like kind of fight or tension or whatever. Where are we at with it? Because it was, it was, it's hard to keep track of it all the time, and and knowing and keeping it so it's always progressing, always moving forward. Well, I have to tell you, it hits me like a knife in my heart every time I have to watch one of these uncomfortable scenes, and I hope. After what has it been? I think three episodes of of tension between Rosemary and Elizabeth. I'm ready for the finale to have a big hug and uh, and a little bit of resolution. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for a happy ending. Um, <laughs> Kevin, I want to go back to you and I, I want to revisit a conversation that we had uh, around this time last year. It was the end oh. of season seven, and you know we were talking about the possibility of, of Rosemary and Lee expanding their family, and we've seen little. Uh, nuggets or, or, or glimpses into that could be a possibility, especially I loved how beautiful their relationship with, with Rachel was this season. But I think fans are curious going into the finale. Um, can you share any details about the family planning front? Well, that's a complicated question, isn't it? <laughs> the truth of it is, is that of course, um, this is something that we've been working towards for a long time, but uh, it's never a question of just 
pulling the trigger on something and it happens, there's a lot of things that go into that decision. There's a lot of dynamics that are involved in which decision do we make? Which way do we go? If, if, if it's we choose A or B, how does that affect everybody else on the show? How does that affect us moving forward? So it's a complicated thing. But I will say this. We are both completely on board for wanting to expand the family in one way or another. So I think that it's just been a long ongoing question and I'm hoping that uh, if we get a chance to go again, we'll have some more solid answers for you on that one. <laughs> okay. I, I was wow. in my so well done. I really want that. I think that's a logical and good destination for these two. It's just a matter of how we get there. Okay. So just a haven't. few logistics to work out. For exactly. Me. Just a few logistics to work out. Okay, Pascal, are you on team adoption or team Rosemary's pregnant? Woo! Oh, gosh. I am firmly one of those teams. Yeah, good answer. Good answer. But I don't actually, I don't want to say which team I'm on because I still want it to reveal like a bit of a surprise. And so, or if it even happens, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, so I don't really want to say which team I'm on. I definitely have an idea of what way I think would be best for the show and for the characters, but, um, but I'm not, I'm reserving. I'm, what is it? Pleading the fifth. I'm not going <laughs> sure. to, I'm not going to say anything on that yet. Okay. Kevin, you'll like get you the an scoop opinion. as soon as it's as it's available. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I always have an opinion, but on this one, my opinion is that uh, I love how Pascal got out of that, and I'm going to follow right behind her and see the fifth <laughs> on that myself. Okay, that was... then I'm going to look at your executive producer, Aaron Craco. Oh no. And <laughs> Me too. I know you're involved in in the storytelling of this series, and I would love to know your thoughts on Lee and Rosemary possibly someday. Um, welcoming a child or adopting a child? Well, I think Lee and Rosemary would make the most excellent, fun, loving parents. Mm -hmm. And I, at the end of the day, always want what Pascal and Kevin want for their characters. So um, they have my support and I think it would be a very exciting and fun story to tell. I mean, I will just warn them as I'm sure they know. Yes. It isn't always smooth sailing working with babies. <laughs> I mean, well, they've had well their fair share. Yes, well of aware. course. We've done so many scenes with baby Jack, but you know, I feel like I'm the one person that actually, I don't mind, I, I don't, I definitely don't mind it. I actually really enjoy it. Even Aww. when it's not going smoothly, I love it because I just love how unpredictable it is. And you just never know what you're going to get. Kevin, I think a little less so. A um, lot less so. A lot less so, but I love it. Even even when things are un, unraveling, literally mm -hmm. unraveling, like the yeah. scene is unraveling. But um, I I like it. I think it's just, uh, it's just a big jolt of unpredictableness, which just excites me. Okay. Yeah, I, I I don't mind jolt of excitedness, but I'm also not sure I 100% buy that you love it. I have been beside <laughs> you sometimes when it's happening and loving it isn't the expression that I see on your face, but it sounds great for TV. So let's go with that. Let's go with that. Well, and also, are there any amazing, cute, tender moments with baby Jack in the finale that fans can look forward to? You know, sadly, because of COVID, not to focus on our pandemic too much, but because of COVID, we haven't really had as much time with um, little Jack and with the, the school kids on set. And I really feel like it's something that we've been missing in season eight. So hopefully we get a season nine and can, can kind of, you know, reincorporate those characters a bit more once the world starts to open up and feel safer. But I'm trying to think of like, particularly sweet moments with the with the baby i don't remember we shot it so long ago yeah. <laughs> i'm sure there's something sweet it's the finale so i'm sure there's something in there for everybody to, yes. to grab onto. and aaron your lips to god's ears we we need a season nine we can't just end season eight and, and i couldn't even imagine saying goodbye to these characters who who are so near and dear to our hearts especially we know in the finale that elizabeth is gonna 
make a big decision and start a new chapter in her life. But what I do you mean? You yeah, what's going on with that? <laughs> Where should I start? How much time do you have? <laughs> You know, going off of, we, we just watched um, episode 11, and I have to tell you, I feel like Elizabeth is more torn than ever. I felt like maybe at this point in the season, I'd have like a clear gut instinct or, or intuition about who she was leaning towards. And I really feel like it's a 50-50 game at this point. Can you share a little insight into where Elizabeth's mind is at going into this final episode? Oh, my. Um, well... <clears throat> You've all seen the promos and you've seen all of the episodes up until the season finale. So, you know, she hasn't removed her wedding ring yet, um, but it's coming. Spoiler alert. Wow. So I think that that's an indicator of of where she is and just how long it's taken her to to really make peace with moving on. Yes, she's allowed herself to have these fun flirtations with these guys, but I think it's taken her this long to work through the the grief, the anxiety, the, you know, Nathan, Lucas, whatever, it's, it's all been weighing on her and it's taken her this long. Um, so I'm really, I'm grateful that I've had the opportunity to play this messy story um, and to get to show a different few sides of Elizabeth this season as she navigates her way toward that, um, that decision. <laughs> Was that, I don't even know if that answered your question, but you know, that's what I'm going no, with. No, it did. Cause you know, I, I think you can, first of all, you can only reveal so much. We don't want any spoilers. We want to watch and be surprised. Um, but, but yeah, I think you guys have done such an incredible job of really giving us the ride of the season. You know, we, we, <laughs> we think one thing in episode four and then we think something else in episode six and then here we are at episode 11 you know what i mean it's just it's been this incredible journey um pascal i want to ask you because obviously playing um elizabeth's closest confidant and she's been um her pillar of support throughout this entire journey i know it's hard i know it's hard to pick and this is hopefully the last time i'll ever have to ask you this question but if you have your best friend's best interest at heart who do you see her ending up with Oh, gosh, I can't believe we're going to have to answer this again. <laughs> you saw the way that she answered that last question. She's going to slide through this. No, 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 no. We already did one plead the fifth. No more pleading the fifth. I won't plead the fifth. I will give the same answer that I have always given, which, because Rosemary's always been unwavering. She's always been very clear about what team she's on. She's on Team Elizabeth. And she actually doesn't care. Team Lucas, Team Nathan, she honestly doesn't care. She's purely Team Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. And she only wants what's best for Elizabeth, And she, which in her opinion is Elizabeth just opening her heart and to love. And that can be with either person. I really don't think we've ever but, seen any indication from Rosemary that she has a preference between these two gentlemen like they're they're both fine they're both lovely she only wants elizabeth to be happy but didn't deidre ask what pascal thinks oh was that, <laughs> is that um, a question I, I technically didn't i was focusing on what you know what um no what it was Rose what Mary Rosemary Mary, wants. Like, what, who does my, bad. Want? my bad no, my bad my bad Kevin, look, you're a great journalist. That's a great follow-up question. Pascal, as an objective fan and viewer of the show, do you <laughs> see someone who's got like a little competitive edge? I don't see someone who has a competitive edge. On the contrary, I feel very similar to your experience watching this season where I felt like as it was going along, um, I thought one way and then I thought the other way and then I thought back to the original way and and then i saw the teaser for 11 and then now i'm so i just i find i've been finding myself flip-flopping this season watching of going who who is the right person where is elizabeth's heart like i actually don't know and um and that i think is intentional <laughs> for sure for sure. Um, so yeah, I just, I honestly don't know. I don't know. I, I, I will say I was team Lucas for a long time. And then I watched some episodes and I thought, Oh God, no, of course she's supposed to be with Nathan. And then, and then, um, and then I thought again, Lucas, cause I saw that, that steamy little scene in his office where they, <laughs> she came out and she was all flustered and like, Ooh, 
cool me down. And so yeah. then I thought, whoa, okay, those fireworks we haven't seen with Nathan, certainly. So, I, so you know, I'm, I'm undecided. Back and forth. Yeah. Back and forth. Okay. Kevin, are you kind of on the same 50-50 team or do you have somewhat of a preference? I initially thought this was a show about a lady and a Mountie. And then I kind of stuck with that in the beginning. And then all through last season, I kind of thought that that's eventually where the show will land. And then this season, I, I paid more attention to what was going on. And I saw the relationships develop a little bit more on screen, that is. And one of the things that Pascal and I, I think, do well is that we're good friends off camera. And when we're on camera, we bring the fun with us and... I think what started happening a lot more with both Kevin and Chris and Aaron is they started bringing some of their, cause they're all quite good friends as well. And that, that chemistry is starting to come on camera now. And now I have no idea, but what I did do is because on a completely selfish note, I want the show to go on for a long time. Oh. So I'm trying to get both guys to stick around as long as they can. So I want them to buy things they can't afford and they have to stay on the show, like houses or boats or silly purchases like that, that they need to stay working for. So that's my ambition now is to just make sure both guys stay around. I don't care who ends well up with them. Well, Kevin, I, I think you're in luck because, Aaron, you've previously told us that regardless of who Elizabeth ends up with, both gentlemen are going to be sticking around on the show. That's true, correct? Oh, I, I, I don't have complete and total control over that. You know, th these guys are human beings who may make decisions of course. that take them away from the show. But sure. as far as I'm concerned, like, I don't want Nathan to go anywhere. I don't want Lucas to go anywhere. Let us let us keep these characters who we love so much. I've heard way too much about the Hope Valley black hole and how characters disappear. And let's keep these people around who we love. So, yes, let's keep them. 100%. And, and Aaron, just as we go into this season eight finale, I would love if you could indulge the Hardys, give us your best tease, and, and what do you think we're going to feel as we watch this final episode? Oh, I really could have prepared something, I guess. Um, <laughs> what are you going to feel? Well, I think there will be some very real tension, emotional turmoil, satisfaction, tenderness, um, a lot of heartfelt moments, passionate moments. Uh, it, it isn't just one thing in true When Calls the Heart fashion. You know, this I've described this season as feeling like kind of a heartfelt roller coaster. And I think it's going to feel like that that rush that you feel when you get off a roller coaster where it's just sort of overwhelming everything that you've experienced. And I hope it is as satisfying for our viewers as it was for us to film it, because I think we're all really proud of, of what we've delivered this season. Oh, I cannot wait. Everybody, please tune in this Sunday, Hallmark Channel, 9 p.m., When Calls the Hearts, season eight finale. It's going to be incredible um pascal i want to ask you because you know we've been tweeting every single week we're begging please give us more when calls the heart we want a season nine if we get if we're so lucky to get a season nine is there anything that you have in mind that you would love to see explored more or, or tackled more for my character or for the show in general? anything anything you want well i Okay, personally, a personal wish for me, I always think Rosemary really thrives in chaos. She's one of those people that I think just handles chaos well or not well, but she just kind of gets a rush from it. And I like that. I like seeing more of that. And I don't think we had that much of that element to Rosemary's life this season. Um, and so I'd like to see her kind of trying to juggle many, many different things and succeeding and failing and all those things. And then as far as the show, um, I really am looking forward to um, having the kids more involved in the show now that, um, you know, I we're in kind of a different space pandemic wise. And so I think 
I think uh, the kids bring a really fun, wonderful energy to the show, both the ch- school children and also Baby Jack. And I, I'm excited to have that back as a part of the show because I personally have missed it. Kevin? Well, I work with the children a lot. And so <laughs> I wish... <laughs> um... <laughs> I actually, I mean, I, I wear my heart on my sleeve with this one. I'd like to see some resolution to the uh, to their uh, uh, potential resolution of family matters. I'd like, I'd like to see where this goes. I'd like to to finally see them. Uh, I, I love Lee and Rosemary. I, I, I've come to really love those characters over the years, and Elizabeth too, of course. Uh, but I just think that. I would love to see them as a family, plain and simple. I know it's hard working with kids. I know Pascal will lie about it, but I'm up for it. <laughs> so I, uh, I think it'd be really fun. I think that we've been kind of going steering the ship that way for a while, and uh, I know that they've we've started this whole kind of road to um, self fulfillment and finding things that are meaningful. And I think that if you just drop a kid right in the middle of all that that would just their their relationship would blossom in a way that we just haven't seen yet and i think that would be a lot of fun to play as an actor okay so family planning rosemary with a little more chaos aaron this next chapter hopefully that we'll get to see of, of elizabeth is there anything on your mind that you would really love to get to do on this show well, personally, I, I agree. I'd really like to bring more of the kids back into the fold because I think a large part of Elizabeth's identity is wrapped up in being a teacher. So getting to have those scenes with them again is really important to me. And then I think, you know, we have been just, well, I'll say it, we've been dragging out this triangle for how many years now? I think by the end of this season, we'll have a decision. If we get a season nine, it would be really nice to be able to play out some of those like sweet romantic scenes and kind of watch that courtship blossom. So um, that's what I would say for Elizabeth. I would say for the show as a whole, I'm so, so happy that we were able to bring the Canfield family into One Calls the Heart this season. And so I think if we can continue to learn more about their characters and, and really see how they fit into the life in Hope Valley, that can only benefit our show. They're incredible actors, and I think their characters are really interesting as well. Those are my feelings. I couldn't agree more. I hope the powers that be, the producers, I hope all of them are watching and heard all those super solid pitches. And fingers crossed for more magic from When Calls the Heart. Again, everybody, please tune in this Sunday, Hallmark Channel, 9 p.m., the season eight finale of When Calls the Heart. No one does a finale like When Calls the Heart does a finale, so I cannot (laughs) wait to see what you guys deliver. Before I let you go, on a separate note, everyone is so excited to see Pascal and Kevin take off the Rosemary and the Lee hat, and we're gonna see you jet off to paradise in your new movie, You Had Me at Aloha. So, Pascal, you get a trip to Hawaii. I mean, was this twisting your arm? What was it like going to paradise to film? The whole thing, the whole experience was just a pinch me moment. I just felt like every day I turned to Kevin at some point and said, is this really happening? Are we really doing this? Like, it's happening. We we made this. This is our movie. We developed it. We created it. And I just... Um, it was it was really a, a dream come true. I don't know how else to describe it. It was a dream come true. Kevin, how did you feel being there in Hawaii, living out all these? I saw some ATVs, waterfalls. Yeah. Wow! It was every day was uh, was fun. I mean, working with this one is fun. Period. But we uh, this was a long time coming. We we started this about two just over two years ago and. Uh, the world went chaotic, so things got slowed down. And when we finally got there, um, we did this thing. Getting to Hawaii was complicated, and we talked about this as we went on our journey there. I'm like, well, we ticked that box, we ticked that box, we ticked that box, and we just kept jumping through hoops. And then all of a sudden, we were there. You know, we got in late at night, got to the hotel, and just kind of looked at each other. I'm like, here we are, here we go. It's happening. We we're, it. we're actually here. And then each day just got better and better. It was just 
fun from the moment we started in the morning until we went back to the hotel at night. And, uh, and in the end, we both seen a rough cut and we're both extremely happy. And we think it was a lot of fun to do. When you come up with something like this and it's your own baby and then to see it finished and to be proud of it is really, is really something. Can you share just for anybody who might not have, you know, seen the the clips that are online yet, you should go check them out because they're hilarious and, and the pictures are breathtaking. Can you just share a little bit about what the movie's about and why you think fans are going to love it? Sure. Well, uh, essentially, a uh, little backstory. So we were doing a show one time and an exec was there and she said, what do you guys want to do next? A friend of ours had just directed a movie in Fiji and we both got jealous. So we said, we want to do a movie in paradise. If we pitched an idea, would you go for it? And they're like, yeah, sure. So I turned to Pascal and I said, what do you want to be? And she said, out of the blue, I want to be a travel blogger that's frustrated and never been anywhere. I'm like, great, I'll be the opposite. Let's pitch that. So essentially, that's what we have. We have a travel show where um, they, they, they've lost their host. Pascal's character is the producer of the show and they need a new host. So they bring in my character who's kind of a wild fly by the seat of his pants guy. She's a more by the book studious A type. And in the end, the network decides to make us because they see us bickering and bantering behind the scenes and decide to put us in front of the camera together. Oh, Lord. And so we have very different ways about going about the job and it's chaotic and frustrating. And then eventually they find a way to inspire one another and, you know, find the good in the other and take some of that on themselves. Well, my goodness, I cannot wait to see the two of you playing battling TV hosts who yeah. actually do have a really nice um, relationship off screen as well. And I, Pascal, are you going to give us all the feels? I know, you know, there's there's hur hurdles and obstacles along the way, but are you going to hit us in the feels? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the movie has everything. Um, but more than anything, the overriding, the overriding mood is just so fun. The movie is fun. It clips along. It's super fast. It's really funny. It's sharp it's 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 a fun ride it's a really fun ride and that i'm so proud of that's i think what kevin and i were hoping to um give off like that's what we were hoping to produce and um that's what it is well and, it's there's, mission there's, accomplished. and there's definitely <laughs> lots of feels too yes amazing you guys never let us down again for a third time hardy's I will be there tweeting hashtag Hardys. I'm sure Aaron and Pascal and Kevin will too. The season eight finale of When Calls the Heart. I can't believe it's already here. Sunday, Hallmark Channel, nine o'clock. Thank you, fine, fine, fine humans for your time today. And congratulations on an incredible season. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Tune in guys. Hope you enjoy the last episode. Hopefully <laughs> we'll see you next season.